Welcome to Neo Royal House of Pricey Cardboard. We are now two weeks away from the release of Ikoria, and it's time for another precon preview. Me and Kelly are playing today the Marju Human deck versus the Jeskai Cycling deck. To be completely honest, I do not really like the Cycling deck, it is trying to do too many things at the same time, in my opinion. Some cards make tokens, some deals a little bit of damage, some care about drawing a lot of cards. The only point tying it all together is the cycling ability, but if I were to run this deck as of one of mine, I would pick a strategy and focus on it. I run Gavi, Ness Warden. The best win cons, in my opinion, are either the Locust God or Psychosis Scrawler, with the two wheels in the deck or the Reconnaissance mission making these Locusts create more Locusts. As for the human deck, it is a lot more focused, it cares about creating multiple small tokens and giving them evasion or keywords. You also have a small package of death triggers with pings and zombies. Kitty is playing the partners Trin, Champion of Freedom and Silvar, Devourer of the Free. Kitty keeps an opening hand with Talia's Lieutenant, Outpost Siege, Temple of the False God, Scarred Barons and two basic plans. My opening hand contains Abandoned Sarcophages, Shabra's the Sky Shark, Burrow Singet, a basic plane, and on my desert, Desert of the True, of the Mindful, and of the Fervent. Kitty gets to start the game and land drops a plane. I land drop a Desert of the Mindful. Kitty land drops a Scored Barons, healing one. And I land drop a plane before casting a Burrow Singet. Kitty land drops a Nomad Outpost. And I land drop a Myriad Landscape. I follow it up with a Fluctuator. Kelly land drops a plane and cast her commander, Trin, Champion of Freedom. Allen drops an island and cast Shabraz, the Sky Shark. His companion ability triggers and let me get Bralin, Sky Shark Rider, to my hand. Kelly land drops a temple of the False God. She casts a Talia's Lieutenant and follow it up with an outpost siege picking cats. She goes to combat and send Trin to me. After her end step, Trin creates a 1 1 human token which triggers the Lieutenant. Going to my draw step, Shabraz gave me 1 life and a plus 1 plus 1 counter. I then drop an exotic archer and cast my commander, Gavi, Nest Warden. I then cycle for free a Desert of the True, buffing Shabraz and creating a 2 2 cat dinosaur. We do not have those since the decks are poxied, but look at this token, it is clearly the best thing about this precon. Okay, okay, maybe the counter for 0 is alright too. At Kelly's upkeep, the outpost exiles a card and she can play it this turn. She then drops the plane and casts Crackling Doom. She goes to combat and sends Trin to me. I block with Gavi and the cat token and she pass. I cast a lightning rift. I then cycle a desert of the fervent to draw a card and pay 1 to deal 2 damage to the lieutenant. I then land drop a shivan reef and crack my myriad landscape for 2 basic mountains. I go to combat for the first time and send Gavi to Kelly before ending my turn. At her upkeep, the outpost says as a card. She then drops a wind scared crag and casts her second commander, Silvar, Devourer of the Free. I then drop a plane and cast Abandoned Sarcophage. I cycle Boon of the Wish Giver, creating a cat. I then cast the boon from my graveyard, exiling it. I give the turn to Kelly. She goes to her upkeep, exiles a card, and draws her turn. She then drops a basic plane, really happy about this new black mana source, and casts a Xatrid Necromancer. She casts a Zoloport Cutthroat, and then a Thraben Doomsayer from the outpost. She goes to combat and sends Silvar to me, I block with two cats to can. Reacting to my blocks, Kelly sacrifices a human to make Silvar indestructible. She also drains me for one and creates a zombie to can tapped. I let drop an island and cast a Dismantling Wave. I target the outpost siege to destroy it. I then cast Ethereal Forager, delving away 4 cards including the Dismantling Wave. I then cast a Surly Badrazor, passing. Kelly untaps and then drops an Evolving Wilds. She recasts Trin and crack her Evolving Wilds for a basic mountain. Heading into combat, Silvar head my way and I block with Gavi and my Forager. Kelly, reacting to my blocks, tap her Doomsayer to create a human token. I cycle my Nimble Obstructionist to counter the ability and draw a card. Since I discarded a creature, the Badger Zor would gain a plus one plus one counter. I then pay one additional mana to activate the Lightning Rift and shock the Necromancer. Kelly sacrificed the Necromancer to Silvar, granting it indestructible and creating a zombie token. Zolaport Cutthroat joins the stack party and drains me for one. 
Kelly assigned lethal damage to my commander and we head out of combat. What a stack, ladies and gentlemen, for two precons. At the end step, Trin creates a 1-1 human token. Going to my turn, I cycle a drifting Mido and pay 1 to shock the Doomsayer. Instead of wasting some good flesh, Silvar takes care of the Doomsayer. The Cutthroat drains me for 1. I cycle Akroma's Vengeance and get the fight trigger with the Badger Zor. I make it fight Thrin and pay an additional 1 to shock the Cutthroat. I cast a Reconnaissance Mission. I go to combat and send the Forager to Kelly. I take back the sorcery I exile when delving it. I end my turn. Kelly casts a Cleansing Nova, destroying all artifacts and enchantment. She then casts Dire Tactics, targeting my Badger Zor. She goes to combat and sends two zombies, a human and Silvar, to me. No blocks are declared and we go to my turn. I cast Bralin, Sky Shark Rider. I then land drop a Nizet Boiler War, returning a desert to my hand. I pay 2 to cycle the desert and deal 1 damage to Kelly with Bralin. I pass. Kelly cast a Species Specialist, naming Human. A bit macabre, but it's okay. She follow it up with a shared animosity. Heading into combat, she sends the same attack party to me. I block Silvar with both my creatures. Silvar eats the human token to get indestructible. She then drops a Spine Rogue Null and hide away a card, ending her turn. I cast Z sending it. I then cast Dismantling Wave, destroying shared animosity. I finish by casting a Descent upon the Sinful. Kelly reacts by sacrificing the Species Specialist to Silvar. We exile the board, mostly Kelly, and I create a 4 4 angel token since I have Delirium. Kelly then drops a command tower. I notice that the sun has set at this moment and adjusts the lighting. Kelly recasts Silvar and follow it up with the humble defector. I too recast my commander and use it to instantly cycle a forgotten cave for 0 mana. I also create a cat dinosaur. I go to combat and send my angel to Kelly. Kelly recasts Thrin and then casts a Magus of the Disc. Heading into combat, Silvar head my way and I do not block. At her end step, Thrin creates a 1-1 human token. In my turn, I cycle Smoldering Crater and create a cat token. I then pay to cycle Rogrin Crystal. I then drop a Nostile Desert and going into combat, I send my angel to Kelly. At my end step, Kelly taps the Humble Man to draw 2 but sacrifice it to Silvar before giving it to me. Now that's just rude. She then untaps and casts a Sanctuary Lockdown. Fitting, really. She then casts a Skull Clamp. For a combat step, Silvar head my way and I do not block. Before damage, the token gets sacrificed of one more points of commander damage. At Kelly's end step, Trin brings back another human and I flash in a portal mage. I then untap and in a last effort of damage decide to send all my team to Kelly. I even animate the hostile desert. Kelly sacrifices the human to Silvar and activate our Magus of the Disc, destroying most of the non-lands permanents. I replay Gavi and end my turn. Kelly goes straight to combat and deals me lethal damage with this resilient kitty. Looking back at this game, you may think I judge harshly my cycling precon, but we actually played a couple of games before settling on this one and every time I seem to work so hard to get ahead for so little profit. Paying an additional 1 to deal 2 damage can really work in 1v1, but would it work in multiplayer games? I have my doubts. Mardu is also a really good color combination for 1v1. The aggressive nature of this color pairing tends to put a lot of pressure on value decks like cycling. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Make sure to subscribe for more EDH content and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at EDH Neo Royal. Take care my friend.